Shalom from Israel and welcome to Fren Frenemies, when, where Israeli current affairs are being discussed and no, nothing is being left behind. With me today is Brian Reeves of, the, of Peace Now to represent the left side of the spectrum. Shalom, My name, shalom, shalom. My name is Yves Maor from Ida ORGIL, and let's begin. So, Brian, there is no doubt that Gaza have occupied the Israeli headlines in the, in the past few days ever since uh, uh, the embassy uh, movement ceremony to Jerusalem, which we will discuss later on this show. And let's brief our audience with what happened. Basically, Hamas have launched a military operation dis disguised as protest, and uh, the target was to, uh, or declared at least, uh, to break through the fence into Israeli settlements to, uh, to conduct uh, terror, terror, act uh, terror activities. The IDF reacted, and uh, uh, in this reaction, there were 60 uh, uh, Arab casualties. Later, 50 of them were declared as uh, uh, Hamas activists. So this is what's going on. And I think that the, the most important thing to acknowledge in this context is the fact that for the first time in an ever uh, uh, repeating uh, uh, um, uh, uh, events in Gaza, for the first time, Israel, Israel is being backed up by the global community. Yes, well, uh, I'd like to add a few other couple points as well. Uh, we're finding that on Friday, um, the protest that was supposed to be sort of the culmination of uh, these demonstrations is going to be more restrained following uh, talks between Egypt and Hamas and Israel. Um, regarding your point on the idea that this was all a, a Hamas uh, operation, for sure, we, we see that Hamas was able to co-opt uh, this demonstration again and was able to draw uh, a heavy-handed response from Israel. And yet again, we find that Israel is in this situation where um, it's having to defend itself uh, from international criticism over its conduct. And I think, I don't know about you, but I think, shouldn't we be asking ourselves as Israelis, uh, how did we let Hamas get us to this place again? And uh, how do we prevent getting back here because for me it seems like a lot of the pr issue the reason why these demonstrations started in the first place was because of the humanitarian situation which of course is Hamas's problem as well um but for sure israel Only has israel first of all let me address sure. the fact that you keep referring to these events as demonstration and as protests there are no no demonstrations and protests this is a military operation now once people like you or like journalists both in israel and abroad keep referring to it as if it was indeed pro uh, a, 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 a demonstration and protest well, basically, you use or being yielded to Hamas propaganda, to this racist, anti-Semitist propaganda. That's something that I can cooperate that, with. As, as for your question, what did we do uh, to let Hamas to bring us to this point? Well, the answer is clear. The 2005 disengagement. If this would have not happened, if the left, is, if the Israeli left would have not conquered uh, uh, the media and the courts and allow for this tragedy to happen, for this crime against immunity, for, for this ethnic cleansing of Jews out of Gaza only because they, they are Jews, if this crime would have not been made 13 years ago, years ago, then we would have not faced this situation because Hamas would have never gained control over Gaza. The IDF would have gained control of Gaza and anyone would, everyone would have benefited, not only the Jews, to still be there. And not, not only the Jews of Sderot and of, of, of the, the region surrounding Gaza enjoying better life and better li livelihood mm -hmm. and better security, but also the Arab residents of Gaza would have still enjoyed the defense of the, of the IDF the same like their brothers do in Judea and Samaria. So the issue with whether these are not demonstrations or not. I agree that these were co-opted, but to, to say that all these people out here are part of some Hamas operation, let's look at the facts. The Gaza Strip it's, it has a 44% unemployment rate. A lot of these people just have nothing else to do when they come, and certainly they're all not there as, as card-carrying members of Hamas. They might have been co-opted, but uh, their, their reasons for demonstrating are, are genuine. You know, this is somewhat has to do, this has to do with the humanitarian crisis. Regarding, regarding Gaza Strip, I, I feel like you're painting a lot of broad strokes here. First of all, even after Israel left the Gaza Strip, it still controls Gaza land, air, sea. And it imposed a blockade, and we can talk about there the is security. No 
the security reasons for, for the blockade. As I told this Sunday on this very channel, it's quite an odd blockade when thousands of trucks uh, crossing the borders, thousands of trucks with supply crossing the borders into Israel still puts into quotas Gaza. on on food. No, there it are no, no you, are, you are mistaken on that. There are no quotas of food. The only demand is that Israeli officials will be able to check what comes in. This is the only demand. There are no quotas whatsoever. The only quotas as uh, are about what, are, what the Gaza people are capable of purchasing. Palestinians and Gaza are only allowed to export 450 uh, tons of tomatoes uh, per month. Outside so we're talking of about Gaza. export now. We're talking about an blockade that denies them from the so right So is 500 to tons of tomatoes no, you, you a security you, threat? Well, I think the issue here. Okay, the, let's, the, we're getting the, the issue here. The issue here is whether or not these people are going to understand that they better have Israel as an ally rather rather than as an enemy. Now, as for the, uh, the whether or not this is, and let's go to that because this is right now this Thursday. It is precisely the point. The point is of whether or not these are protests or military, military operations because this kind of behavior is something that we're going to be seeing on and on and on again on the border. And why am I saying that I'll this is a military sure. operation? Mm -hmm. because, because of two reasons. First of all, when you see that 50 out of 62 uh, 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 killed persons... Those are Hamas's numbers. The IDF was Hamas, 24 uh, out, of six, uh, out of 59 when it was yesterday. Well, it was yesterday. Uh, There's a Hamas number. Either way, he takes, Hamas takes responsibility for this number and sure. basically says that 80% of these people are my activists. Now, given that Hamas, and I'll address this point in a, mi in a minute, is eventually a terrorist or a military or a paramilitary, organization means mm -hmm. that their operation, their people that were there were conducting military operation. And there so, is another reason to, de to define this as military operation, and this is the fact that Hamas constantly uh, 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 goes against everything that we define as Western morality and, stri and tries to blur the, la the line sure. between what is so, military and what is civil. I, I, I agree with you that Hamas is an irreprehensible uh, government at the same time. Yes, they, they were able to turn this into their own, for their own reasons, turn this into their own operations. At the same time, the reason why we, 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 we uh, enforced the blockade at the first time was not just security, it was also in order to pressure Hamas perhaps to have some sort of indirect no. form of regime change. And the fact that, in the fact that it hasn't happened, there is no doubt and, that wait, wait, I'll let you speak, and the Gazan citizens are, are paying the price. And the problem we have here now is, what do we do in the future? We know Hamas. You agree with me. Hamas is going to try this again. It's going to try to exact a response. Isn't it on our, isn't it our own interest to give Palestinians hope? The United States moved its embassy to Jerusalem on Monday uh, with a huge uh, ceremony that happened at the new embassy location in southern Jerusalem. Uh, there was a lot of fanfare. Uh, Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner were both in attendance. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there was a bit of controversy. While many Israelis felt uh, that this was uh, a, uh, an affirmation of, their, of the capital that they know, is to be the capital of Israel. Uh, many people in the international community, as well as Palestinians, and critics of the Trump move to move the embassy have said that this was a one-sided measure uh, that distances both sides from the goal of a two-state solution. Uh, I turn to you now, Ziv, to, uh, to give your two cents. Well, first of all, there is no contro uh, con uh, controversy, at least in Israeli street. There are barely any people in the Israeli left that are against this move. Uh, because basically, even in the Zionist left, let's say 90% of the of the of the Jewish spectrum in Israel acknowledge the fact that Jerusalem is and always was for thousands of years the capital of the Jewish nation, even prior to the establishment of the state of Israel. So uh, the fact that the states. 
uh, the, the United States finally recognized that is something that is conceived as positive both on the right and on the very most of the left. As for what's going on uh, among the Arabs of Israel and among, uh, uh, and among the international community, first of all, it's about time for everyone to acknowledge that there will be no Palestinian state. There is no uh, two-state solution whatsoever, and two-state solution is no goal for anyone who knows anything about the region and about the, the, the last decade of what's going on in the Palestinian Authority. They not only have got no capability to have their own state, they also do not want to, and they declare it again and again and again. This is all a scheme, and many in the West uh, are colluding with it in order to, uh, uh, to, to take a few steps st uh, uh, further in their actual goal, which is the dissolution of Israel. Now, what Trump made in his decision and his very swift resolution of this decision is basically delivering the opposite, me uh, the opposite message. Israel is here to stay. Okay. Now, now so, no, so I agree, and everyone, you know, I will say that uh, Jerusalem, of course, is the capital of Israel. I think in, in many people on the left have you acknowledge, will, will acknowledge that. Of course, it's the capital. The issue is uh, that, that we argue that there is, there is no neutral way to move this embassy. Uh, if, you, if you do it unilaterally and, and don't mention Palestinian claims to Jerusalem, uh, then by omission, you are undermining uh, the claims to Jerusalem and the two-state solution. And you might want to, and if you, uh, and if you do mention the Palestinian claims, then uh, that undermines the, the people who support the one-state agenda. But uh, as someone who supports the two-state agenda, um, not just peace now, but of course, three decades of uh, the chiefs of the IDF, the Mossad and the Shin Bet, all say that a two-state solution is not only the right solution, but also the one in Israel's national security interest. I would argue that uh, Israel should have uh, asked the United States to go about this at the very least. If the United States was going to do this, mm -hmm. then to go about this a different way, recognize that a future capital would be uh, in East well, Jerusalem with negotiated borders, of course, for the Jewish quarter and other places. So, first of all, I don't see any virtue in neutrality in this context. There is no other side to recognize and to uh, give any, sec any second of a thought to their interests and to, uh, to their ambitions. The Palestinian mission has failed. And it's time to recognize that. As for what few decades of generals and former IDF uh, and, and, and Mossad and Shin Bet commanders say, well, it might have been right or at least conceived right when they were in charge. But ignoring what happened here in the last 18 years, the Second Intifada, think they're ignoring the disengagement, it. Some of these people the were Lebanon just, war. They just left the government. Well, they, some of them were appointed by Daniel yes, himself. Yes, I, I understand that. Eventually, uh, either they ignore it because not be, being in office when the actual things that need to be recognized happen, or they're partially blind, their ideology uh, 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 blinds them. All Either way, them? well, w w way many of them. And basically, when you look at what the Israeli uh, uh, public chooses over and over again when he's being asked democratically, democratically to vote, he ignores the Palestinian in interest and acknowledge that the two-state solution is no longer on the table uh, uh, as long as Israel is a democracy and as long as its government is obliged to do what the people of Israel the wanted to do, there will be no Palestinian the state. The reason why we support a two-state solution, and, and when I say a two-state solution, I'm saying that uh, two capitals in Jerusalem is usually a requisite. It's, it's virtually every time a requisite for any sort of two-state solution deal. Mm -hmm. uh, the point is, is that if Israel wants to remain a Jewish and democratic state, and if it wants to, if it wants to separate from the Palestinians and, uh, and, and not to continue to govern them, but, but just even from one's own narrow self-interest to separate from the Palestinians, I don't want to there's no other from the Arabs. There are no Palestinians, and I do not want to separate from the Arabs. I want to give them full civil rights and to have them as, as my own citizens. But let's go back to, Jer to Jerusalem you for do, a moment. Including uh, West Bank, yes. Gaza, give them including all Including West Bank. As for Gaza, it's more complicated, but okay. no, no so, doubt about so West Bank. First of all, you think, well, you let, think Palestinians uh, uh, yeah, will yeah, let The next the question table? is demography, but I want to go back to Jerusalem for just one moment to understand the prominence and the importance of, of, of this move right now. Because for the past seven decades, the view of the United States of what Jerusalem is, they are still acknowledging that Jerusalem is an international area that shall be governed by the UN. And this is why not only the United States, but also most of other countries in the world had their embassies in Tel Aviv and acknowledging that Tel Aviv was the capital of Israel rather than Jerusalem. Now, basically, this puts the partition plan away. There is no acknowledgement, uh, no more, from on behalf of the United States. But they States, could have done that anyway. This wasn't the only move that could have been done. And again, you, I, I would agree. If you had grounded it in a Palestinian capital in East Jerusalem, it also would have put the partition away. So it's a, I think at the end of the day, 
we're disagreeing about whether Israel should have a two-state solution if it's in their interest versus a one-state solution, which sure, in your in your case, it sounds like, yes, Israel might have a 59% majority if it just annexed the West Bank, but not Gaza. No, not an extent, but actually uh, uh, actual. <laughs>
Actually, I'm against this recognition. I will explain to you how. First of all, personally, I read history. I have a clue about what happened in Armenia mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the, in the, about 100 years ago, and I know what was going on there. I, there is no doubt, acknowledge the fact that there was a Holocaust there, there was a genocide there, and it needs to be recognized. But there is a sentence that uh, um, Henry Kissinger refers to John Quincy Adams. Basically, he mm -hmm. said that the United States does not need to uh, look up monsters overseas to fight them. Uh, wise countries manage their international affairs on base of interests. Now, there is no doubt that we will have good relations with Armenia way, uh, this way or another. We're stronger mm -hmm. than them. We have common interest both against uh, uh, Turkey and, and against Iran uh, with Armenia. So our relations with them are good. But we have a lot to lose if we do that, if we acknowledge and, and in, front of, and, and, and in front of Turkey. And this is why. This is because while Erdogan is considered as a controversial figure in, in Turkish politics, uh, many Turkeys, very most of them, will consider a personal insult of, on behalf of Israel mm -hmm. if Israel will acknowledge the Armenian. If we are thinking about the era past Iran, after, after Erdogan, one, what should be the basis for our relations with Turkey, there is no doubt that acknowledging this event right now is not the wise thing to do. Sure, at, at the same time, I, I have to ask you, you know, you say it's not at the right time right now. Well, what about at any time in the future? If we have good relations with Turkey and our relations with Armenia uh, will be strong, whether or not we, we say anything more about the Armenian genocide than we do. By the way, we do have the Knesset does, uh, there, within the Knesset, there is a, a memorial every year. Yes. It's just it hasn't entered, yeah, uh, through to law. Um, it seems like there is really no uh, good time to, uh, to recognize well, the, the genocide. And, and, and yet Israel, you know, we, we are a nation that... So this is the part of the show where we offer our audience a positive view of t something that was going on in Israel, and I once again will take the stage uh, to remind the audience that our website, Mida or GIL, Israel's leading commentary web website, with have, which has a very unique conservative point of view, is in the midst of a fundraising, a crowdfunding operation. Please go to Mida or GIL or to en.mida.org. .il to see if you find interest in our contents, and if you do, please support us. Byron, what is your positive point of my, what happened my, this week? Yes, my, well, uh, thank you, Ziv. This was a, a very formative uh, conversation, and I thank you for being my interlocutor today. Uh, my, uh, my good word for today is that uh, Intel has decided to invest uh, $5 billion over the next two years uh, into Israel. And for many of our viewers who may know, uh, Israel is many times suffering a brain drain. So this will hopefully reverse some of that and allow many Israelis to have jobs and stay in this country. Indeed, uh, good news. Thank you very much, Brian, of uh, Peace Now. I was Thank Zip you, Zip. Moore from Midawar GIL. Thank you very much for being with us. Have a good day.